Our operation is comprised of um, owned land and leased land, and then we also run on two allotments on the Grand River National Grasslands. Our permits on the Grand River National Grassland are summer permits. They're uh, from the first part of May till the end of October is the, the outside dates of the permit. On one allotment we run a compressed season, so in, instead of a five and three quarter months, we only run on there for two months with more numbers. And during this part of the summer, all of our cows are on uh, national grasslands. Starting back in the 30s, the government launched the land utilization program to respond to some economic and agricultural impacts the country was facing, and that was the result of the Great Depression and the Dust Bowl era. That program was rolled out to start reacquiring some of those submarginal lands at that time. The people that went broke in the Depression could get out of here or to get at least uh, something for their land and, and to move on. And, and so the government started a program where they would buy up these small places and, and then make uh, bigger pasture units. I think over the course of history, I think around nine or 10 million acres was reacquired in that time. And uh, shortly after, in the, in the 1930s, the Soil Conservation Service initially took the role of managing those lands up until 1954, and at that time, the Forest Service took over managing a large share of those land utilization project lands. In 1960 is when 3.8 million acres of those lands were then designated as the national grasslands. And so at, at that time, there was, I believe, 18 national grasslands, and present day, there are 20 national grasslands. And so, yeah, under USDA Forest Service, who managed numerous national forests, but uh, only 20 national grasslands. So. My dad moved into this area in the late 30s, and uh, he, he took advantage of this government permit. While well, you had to be in the grazing district to be able to use that permit. So it wasn't just for everybody. The idea was to uh, have everybody around close to it that maybe would have had a chance to buy the land to have a, a chance at using the government permit. And so my dad, um, even though he didn't have the number of cattle to utilize the whole permit, he did pay a non-use for a number of years till he got his herd built up to run on the government land. We are at the place that I grew up on in southeast of Lemon, South Dakota. Um, I came back to the ranch after I graduated college and um, just could never quite leave. It was just, it was just the place that I needed to be. So um, thankfully Drew showed up in town and he decided to stay around and we're still here. We have three little girls, Sadie, Emmy, and Henley. I married my wife in 2010. Um, we started ranching full-time here in South Dakota in 2011. A lot of this place that we're on has, had been farmed in the past. Um, a lot of it had been seeded back to uh, perennial forage. Um, we have pretty well seeded the rest of it back to perennials. I think there's only 30 acres of ground that is being farmed right now. We've done a variety of different things with that. Some of it we hay, some of the, some of the cropland that's been seeded back has, has only been grazed since it's been seeded back. We do a lot of bale grazing. We kind of started out as a, as a trial. We just left the bales in the field after we hayed and then we strung poly wire and moved the cows every oh, four days to a week at a time through the winter. Through adding, not just taking off the land, but adding something back is just 
amazing to see the production and the amount of um, diversification that happens and then the, the bright greenness that happens around the hay piles where we, where we bale graze. Um, you're, you're seeing a lot more native western wheatgrass is something that usually likes to crop up first when you're trying to heal the land. One of my goals is to be able to have a cow on every acre, to be able to graze every acre that we have. We're not quite there, but that's kind of one of our goals is, you know, every, every acre is grazable. These grasslands need grazing and that's how we maintain its health and improve its health. I'm proud of the fact that we can live on the same place as my parents and get along because <laughs> that's not always the case. Um, Dad's been very gracious in how we handle our operations where he knows that he needs to operate his own cattle his way and we need to make our decisions but yet we're still there to help each other and it's worked really well that way. You just kind of follow where life takes you. I mean I had, I, I had ambitions of a career off the ranch. The opportunity just kept coming back to be on the ranch so that's the way it turned out. And uh, of course I'm glad that our family is uh, willing to take the reins and move on into the future with it. <laughs>